In this video, we're going to discuss multi-body modification inside of Autodesk Inventor. So the goal of what we're going to look at in this video will be taking a existing profile and cutting it through multiple solid bodies instead of just one. There's some tricks to be aware of as you go through this. We're also going to look at some additional ones such as fillets and chamfers and how we can work with multiple operations on our different bodies. So here inside of multi-body modification one, I have a more completed box with multiple solid bodies. I currently have about nine of them inside of this design. I can see that from the left-hand tree over here, solids one through nine. I also have a sketch that's going to represent a groove that's going to be cut into this box. So I'm going to begin that operation by starting my extrusion command. I'll go ahead and pick that profile, and this will be a cut operation. Notice how it is currently only extruding as a cut through solid body nine. Now, instead, I would like to have it actually go all the way down to the bottom face here and participate in these other solid bodies at the same time. You might be thinking, could I just drag the arrow down further? And as you can see, it still does not participate in the other solid bodies. And I know that because this is the only one that's highlighted. So what if I change my extent options? How about I come up here and do a selected face? I'll pick the bottom face down here. That's the inside of the bottom of the plate of the box. And you can see nothing changes. It hasn't included any additional solid bodies in this cutting operation. So how do I fix this? You have to go to your solid selection button that we have inside of our dialog box here. If you look inside your mini toolbar, we also have a select solid toggle there as well. And now I can select multiple solids for this to actually participate in. And now we get a visual preview of something we would expect to actually happen with this cut that we're doing. I'll go ahead and approve that. You can see the cut does participate through multiple solid bodies. If we were to look in our tree under solid bodies, such as nine, you can see it has extrusion nine and 10. If we look at solid body number six, we can also see extrusion six and extrusion 10 there. If we look under solid seven, we can see extrusion 10 is not part of that solid body. Next up, I would like to add some fillets to the back side of the box here so that it opens correctly. Now, as you can see, when you put your cursor over these edges, it becomes a little bit difficult to actually get the correct edge, and you might have to use your selection filter. So be aware of that. I'll go ahead and start my fillet command though. I'll zoom in here and I'll try to toggle to get the correct edge. Let my selection filter pop up and then cycle through to make sure I'm picking the correct edge. I'll do that on the same side down here. There we go. And I have a parameter that is going to control this. I'll go ahead and list my parameters. This is the parameter called lid support square dim. There we go. There's my fillet value. So now this box will open correctly when the lid opens. The next thing I need to add though is a hole that goes through all these different solid bodies in the backhand side for the pins. So I need a hole that goes through this solid body, this solid body, and this back solid body. I'll go ahead and begin by sketching on this flat face here. I'll hit F7 to slice my graphics and just project that top edge. Go ahead and put in a small circle here with a dimension of five millimeters. There we go. Go ahead and finish the 2D sketch. I'll begin my extrude command. It already has that profile picked. As you can see, if I pull it out this way, it's that one small circle. This will be a cut operation. However, instead of going one direction or asymmetrical, I'm gonna choose my extent options to be between two faces or planes. I'll go ahead and pick this face here, this face over here. Again, I need to select which solids it participates in. So I'll go ahead and pick the solid option, pick this one, pick solid again, and pick the other solid. You can see the preview of that hole going through there now. Let's go ahead and approve that. And we now have our hole that goes through there. Lastly, I'm going to add a chamfer to the front side of the top edges of these boxes here, just as a cosmetic change. I'll go ahead and start chamfer and pick on this edge and this edge over here. And I'll make this four millimeters. 
Here we go. And I'll go ahead and approve that. We basically have done multiple operations on our multi-body file here. And it's really nice to have done it this way because had we had different part files, so a back wall, a top rail on the back side, the front wall, the front support we have there, the different side pieces we have on either side of the box for the lid support, we would have to go to each file independently and make these changes to create the grooves, to create the holes, to create the fillets and the chamfers. Now, instead, I have the majority of this design criteria inside of this multi-body file so that when I do create the separate IPTs, the intelligence will carry forward and update accordingly as changes are made to this multi-body master file. Think how much time I just saved by not having to go to each and every one of those files and make those changes. I didn't have to write down the values and make sure I was referencing them back and forth correctly. And then if a change needed to occur, I only had to do it in one location, not in five or six or 12 different locations.